palletizing made easy? Well, we have the great honor and pleasure of presenting four dot o and it's a completely new written software which allows you to configure your palletizing applications instead of actually programming them that means also that it's easy to configure to change and make changes to your palletizing system even as an end user but Let's look into a little bit where pallet tech fits in, because palletizing is still one of the more common applications for robotics, uh, which we find out in the industry today. And of course, it's a part of our robot system. Pallet tech is a, not a standalone product, as it's a part of a total solution, where of course a robot and a robot controller is a big part of it, together with the teach pendant or smart pad as we call it. We can also install a smart HMI to provide an operator interface beyond the robot controls in there. And what makes all this work together is of course our KUKA software uh, setup. And Palatech is obviously a part of that. So where does it belong then? Well, our software structure uh, is built up of building blocks, which all uh, stands on the basic software operating system, which you probably all know, which is called K KSS, the KUKA system software. And the current versions of that are 8.6 or 8.7 depending on which type of controller you have. And in this software structure, there is a group of softwares which are called application softwares. And application softwares are typically softwares which shorten your application time. By buying these softwares, you can reduce your time to market, your risk in your project. And this is, of course, the part where Palatech belongs. There are other softwares in this group, of course, but they also within the handling of goods um, uh, software group. And Palatech is released, Palatech 4 is released on the current versions of. KSS only. That means the 8.6 and the 8.7, depending on if you have a controller of generation 4 or 5. Uh, it will work on almost all of our industrial robots. It will not uh, work on our collaborative robot, the EVA, and not on the SCARA and Delta. But that type of robots are usually not found in palletizing applications, but all the other robots are applicable to use together with Palatech. And we've had an old, in his, historically we've had an older product called Palette FlexPal, which is now then replaced by this new uh, Palette Tech 4. And one of the focuses of this is that be able to use it in the following types of applications. The more simple type of application is the first one we have on the left hand side here, which is a single pick and single place of uh, packets or objects or cartons or whatever we have. That means that we pick an item from one place all the time, for example, an incoming conveyor belt or so, and pallet them on one single pallet or load carrier. Then we have what is called single pick and multi-place. And this in itself complicates a bit a little bit, but that's also supported. That means that we are still picking our goods from one place, from the conveyor, 
but then we can multiplace them. And that can be done in different ways. Either we have actually two outgoing pallets which we are packing goods on, or we have a picking tool with several lifting and pickup zones so that we are lifting several cartridges at the same time, but then dropping them off one by one, either on different pallets or on the same pallet. And the third scenario we have here is also the multi-pick and multi-place scenario. That means that the robot will be picking goods from several different picking stations and placing the goods on several different outgoing stations. All these scenarios are supported in Palatech 4 and actually quite easily configurable. And we will shortly look into how that works and how that would look like. Because this is really easy. It's, hand, it's about configuring and not really robot programming. And it boils down to four different steps to set up your palletizing application. So of course, the first step is that we need to install the software Palletech. But have we ordered it together with our robot so that it comes pre-installed already? In the second step, we need to define the objects we have in our palletizing uh, application. For example, the gripper. What type of gripper does it have? Has the gripper different pickup zones or is it just one single gripper? Of course, we need to define the infeed stations. Where should I pick up goods from? Where do I find the goods if I have one or several in feed stations? And in the same way, of obviously, I need to define my out feed stations. Where am I to leave the goods? Where will the palletizing take place? And of course, I need to define the products or products that I will be palletizing what sizes are them, what weight, so on. I need to define the size of the pallets that I will be placing the objects on. And I need to define if I am going to use any type of slip sheets. Slip sheets is the in-between layer that are sometimes used in palletizing applications. And where to find those. So that was the first two steps. The third step in this uh, application is to now define our palletizing instructions, or if we call it the sequence of tasks, which looks like this a typical. What I mean is to define the product layer pattern. And this is done graphically within uh, Palletech, where we can define. We have already defined the sizes of the packets. Now we're defining the placement on the pallet. And we get a 2D view and a 3D view, so we can check the layout uh, as well. Once that is done, we also need to define if we are going to use uh, product slip sheets. Again, the in between layers. This is also done in a graphical configurable way like this, as the screenshot you've seen here. So again, this is quite simple. It's a matter of parameterizing and not really programming. So that was, once this is done, we've been through the third step of our palletizing application. And the fourth and final step is about defining our different palletizing scenarios. If we are running several different uh, palletizing scenarios with several different products, perhaps we have different products coming in on the incoming conveyors, as we have in this picture here, where the red boxes should go to one conveyor and the bluish green boxes here are, will go to another conveyor. 
which we could call some kind of a recipe handling, if you like, but we call them scenarios. So we can have several scenarios running here, and these are ch can then be chosen from by the operator from the smart pad at the end of the day. We have now defined the layout, the objects, and the work instructions for our palletizing applications. So actually, now we are ready to test it. So what we need to do is that we have now done this in Work Visual because Palatech is a plugin in Work Visual. Work Visual will now generate automatically the KRL code which we need for the application. We will teach the robot the waypoints we want to use, and we can then also adapt it through our smart pad. Download it to our controller from Work Visual and start testing it. Now there is an interface available directly in our smart pad, which we can test, start, and run. No programming was actually done, only configuration. So this is quite fast, quite easy. And it also allows an end user to adapt and modify the palletizing pattern, for example, quite easily, or the mod, uh, palletizing positions as well. So this is a really easy and flexible system. Now, when it comes to performance of it, well, of course, we have a very high performance here, thanks to our wide range of palletizing robots. But of course, we also want to optimize our uh, performance. And together with our robots, we can also use something called motion modes, which are available in the new controller generations. Which means that normally, when you run the robot in normal mode, we call it performance mode, we can actually change movement path in the modes in our program. So we can choose a dynamic mode, which results in a higher speed of the robots with not really exactly the same path accuracy, which is typically a mode we want to use during a longer movement from A to B. And then we can, in the program, switch mode to path mode when we either pick up or leave a goods here by optimizing the cycle time we use in our applications. There are also feature in Palatech which we call smart path planning, which means that we have something called a dynamic height adjustment. That means that we can now define a different safety clearance heights. So in this application you see here, we start with a home position, we have an in-feed position where we pick our goods, and we have an out-feed position, or several out-feed positions really, because here we are palletizing on two different pallets. And we don't have to define the maximum path every time. We just need to enter an input for a minimum safety distance and the pallet tech application will adapt the path depending on high low high how high the loads on uh, the pallets in between are so the, the, hereby we optimize at all times the cycle time of the application the robot calculates the optimized uh, waypoints depending on the height of the load, which it keeps track of, and adapts it and uses what we have inputted as a safety clearance, minimum safety clearance distance. This will then be handled automatically by Pallet Tech and optimize the movement of the robots. Of course, this is a feature we need to activate, and it will 
use the same settings for all palletizing stations when we use it. In the same way, in terms of increasing performance, there is an, also an object search function within uh, Palatech. That means that when I go and pick up a slip sheet or a new empty pallet, if I have a pallet stack, I can define, of course, I've already defined the input infeed station. I can now define a pre pick position from the robot, will go, move to the pre pick position, go to a slower mode move downwards until it finds its layer and picks up them. The controller will now calculate how many layers have we removed and adjust the pre-pick position downwards as the stack uh, decreases in height as we pick off layer by layer, which also helps us to improve and optimize the cycle time of the Palatec application. And again, this is done by simple configuration, not programming in the Palatech application. So, of course, we also need to maximize the uptime, not only maximize the performance, but of course, maximize the uptime. So, this is these instructions that project we have created in work visual and palatech is available and adoptable directly from the smart pad where we can also change between different scenarios or recipes if we like directly so the end user can do that there you can also even create new ones there and there are also predefined error handlings. If the palletizing is unsuccessful in some way, we can now define how the system should react depending on the type of problem. We can either let the system try to continue the palletizing or send an error message to an external lamp, PLC, whatever, and then wait for the operator to remove or fix the palletizing issue manually. We could tell the complete pallet to be rejected and start a new one if we like, or just tell the robot to ignore this outgoing station for the time being and palletize to other stations. Again, this is just a choice where we choose different options in Palatec how to react to error. Now, of course, as I mentioned, uh, Palatech generates, uh, automatically generates a KRL code, KUKA robot language code, which the robot uses for its palletizer application. But this code is open and unlocked. That means that there are entry points in this code where those of you who are integrators or system partners and you want to add other features or new functionalities within the generated code. Let's say, for example, once the robot picks up a pallet, perhaps we need to show the packets we're picking up to a barcode lead reader to, read, to be able to register that we actually have palletized a product before we actually palletize it. This type of routines or functional fun functions can be entered into the automatically generated project. So it's an open, flexible, and expandable system. Now, if we boil it down to the technical data around Palette Tech, it works on Work Visual 6 of version 6. Thereby, it also supports the Kukia system softwares of 8.6 or 8.7. There is an integrated project analyzer where we can graphically display and show our palletizing applications. <clears throat> and there is an extensive tooltip and help system built in to the system. There 
are a number of gripper zones which we can define. So a gripper can actually have up to 32 different gripper zones which we can turn on and off as we palletize them. The system allows us to configure up to eight in-feed stations and up to 12 output stations. And we are allowed to define up to 999. That is close to 1,000, isn't it? Uh, items or layers or slip sheets and palletizing instructions. And of course, there is also an external interface built into it for handshaking with external equipment, such as external PLC or other type of equipment, as you see in the screenshots to the right here. So to summarize a little bit about Palatech is that we have put great effort in to making this an easy to use software with fast commissioning so you can go on and operate your palletizing application as quickly as possible. This should be done with the highest performance of course and the maximum uptime, but still be able to keep an open system that is easily adaptable, customized to your needs, as long as the basic needs in, uh, in the Palatech is not enough or you want to add functionality, which makes it really a flexible and open system. Now, of course, I've been talking about Palatech as a product, but it is not really a product because it's a part of a total handling concept or handling solution which KUKA provides. And I believe we have a, one of the absolute broadest, most flexible solutions in the market. And of course, Pallet Tech in itself won't do anything. We will need a palletizing robot. And as I mentioned, we have palletizing robots for basically any weight class. But if even if that is not, not enough, we can actually use Pallet Tech with any of our standard robots because all of our standard robots can be put into palletizing mode and work as a pallet, palletizing robot. And then we can use pallet tech with those as well. So basically every six axis robot we have can be used in a palletizing application. But functionality in total and solutions are created with softwares, which is also a part of this. And in a palletizing application, well, of course, we need our palletizing software. We can combine these softwares with other options, perhaps a pick control. We are picking up objects coming in on a moving conveyor, which we then want to palletize. So we could actually pick up objects from moving conveyors and move them directly to palletizing application. Before we test this in the real life, we perhaps want to run this. And with KUKA SIM 4, we can actually install Palette Tech on our office light as well and run that together with KUKA SIM and test the complete application in a digital twin before we move it into the real world. More and more, our customers want to have information directly from the production in real time into their own systems or their own cloud services or external cloud services. And with our software device connected, we can feed that directly from the robot directly to your or your customer's internal system. And of course, and finally, and not least, safety of the application is always important. So, of course, we can combine the palletizing application with safe operation with either fenced in solutions or without fences using scanners instead to achieve a completely safe environment for your operators. Industrial intelligence.